Welcome to the HRC Marathon Training Vlog. And okay, here with my buddy Max Max, Cole, and Evan on a super windy day. It's Wednesday. When did the week go by so fast? Is it Wednesday? Today we're going to talk about when racing hard could be too hard and you're stepping over the line of being safe and causing more harm than reaching goals. My good friend Joe, he commented about what a great job Aya did on her 10k and 5k double race on the very same day at the Tustin Dino Dash. If you missed that, I can leave a card at the end of the video so that you can watch that race recap. That's pretty awesome. Joe also commented that he has friends that really go to the well on races and race to the point where they see rainbows or they feel like they can taste blood in their mouth. Joe asked if it's safe to do that. How far is too far to go as far as hitting an accelerator and pushing and revving your engines and how far you should redline during a race? How much should we take advantage of the race environment to push our performance to the limit? Ryan Hall, Alan Webb, and Dathan Ritzenhine, they did a podcast interview once all together at the same time. They came from the same era where they saw each other in high school and college and as pros. They made their separate ways. Ryan Hall going long distance to the half marathon and the marathon. Dathan Ritzenhine moving to the 10K and Alan Webb, of course, becoming the American mile record holder, which, by the way, just got broken by the goose. In the interview, Alan Webb and Dathan Rissenhein were talking about some of the races that they overlapped in. Well, all three of them did, but the one that is of interest to me is a 10K race that Alan Webb ran against Dathan Rissenhein. Dathan was reminiscing about how he underestimated Alan Webb and was basically thinking that he could use that 10k race as a workout and still leave Alan in the second half of the race since Alan is a middle distance runner. But for some reason, I guess just the competitive nature of all three of them, but for some reason Alan decided to just dropped the hammer from the very beginning and he pretty much burned matches from the first 5k just to keep up and try to stay competitive. Alan described that entire 10k on the track in spikes as just a complete suffer fest doing everything that he could and dipping very deep into the well to hang on and use his kick at the very end and force the win in that 10K on the track against Dathan Ritzenheim. But he pushed really way too hard. He messed up his feet really, really bad. And he pretty much left his whole season on that track because afterwards he would try to do hard workouts and because of his damaged feet, he was doing something funny in his gait and he tweaked his hamstring. And pretty much, he had to go through that whole season nursing that hamstring and really couldn't work out or race as hard as he could because of that injury. We have to pick and choose our battles. The goal for Alan Webb in that race is not to win that race, it's a 10K. So it's probably to get good work in, to get some experience on the track, and to put in effort for building strength. You have to pick and choose when you do your best effort and 
in our case, for marathoning, we want a, our best effort to culminate in that marathon race. Who is windy? Sometimes you get a little competitive out on training runs, but it's not worth it to dip so deep into the well or we're getting a little competitive at the turkey trot. It's not so worth it if we're not going in to our A race 100%. I like to use little personal indicators to keep myself in check. For example, when I do VO2 max efforts and I can feel kind of an itchiness on my back, I don't feel like I'm gonna ever see rainbows or get television or anything like that. But I feel kind of an itchiness on my back. That's when I know that I need to let up on my effort. If you feel dizziness or blurred vision, especially on a long run, then it could be caused by dehydration. So make sure that you don't fight past that and you respond by floating and then taking the proper hydration. If you feel like you're low energy or you feel like the bonk is coming on, then you're probably low blood sugar and you need to start floating and take the proper nutrition to get yourself out of that low blood sugar state. We all have been exposed to the mentality of being tough and fighting through, but it's good to understand and know your body so that you can make the right decisions to keep yourself safe and healthy. It's a delicate balance between pushing ourselves to the limit and staying safe, but keep working at it and you can understand it better and improve at a better rate and so you'll be happy with the improvement and the good health. Joe, I hope that answers your question and I hope you go out there and use the races as inspiration to train harder and on the day work as hard as you can within your limits. We are on a three mile cool down run after we did a three mile warm up this morning. Here are the numbers for our warm up run at 4.45 in the morning. After the warm up, we did a fartlek workout. It was speed play with 15 two minute ons and we floated one minute at easy pace in between each two minute on at lactate threshold effort. Our lactate threshold effort was our 10K race pace, which is around 6.30 per mile. Here are the paces for the first 10 two minute ons. I was able to get a little bit of footage of the last five two minute ons, albeit it was extremely dark, but here's how it all went down. This is the 11th two minute on that tempo effort. Kids are doing a great job. It's awesome. Okay, this is the 12th two minute on that tempo effort. It's really windy day today, but the kids are fighting hard. This is our 13th two minute on on our 1k loop. We are still real dark right now. This is crazy. This is the 14th two minute on. Our tempo effort is soaring around 10k race pace. Working hard. Okay, last two minute on. Here we go. Let's go. This is number 15 on a very dark and windy day. There's no sweat on me right now because it all blew up. I'm gonna have a ton of salt all over me afterwards. Kids are working hard after a very tough VO2 max session yesterday. 
This is our double, our back to back, Wednesday, Thursday. And we'll take a couple days rest and hit a 22 mile long run on Saturday. We can do it. Doing great, Evan. 15 seconds. All right, time. Well done. What a great medium long run workout with speed play. So glad that my good friend Max Max was able to join us on a little bit of our cool down. And here is a summary of the entire workout today. It was a really good one. I was super happy about getting this hard work done after a really, really tough six by 200 meter interval session yesterday. If you missed that one, I'll leave a card at the end of the video. Thanks so much for joining us all the way to the end of this talk and workout. Please like this video, help out the algorithm, and give us a subscribe if you haven't done so already. Help out the channel. We hope you have a great day and a meaningful run. We'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye now.